The Islamization of Mindanao Islam was the first recorded monotheistic religion in the Philippines, was reportedly brought by Muslim traders from the Persian Gulf, Southern India, and several Sultanate governments in Malay Archipelago. The first missionaries then followed in the late 14th and early 15th century, which facilitated the formation of Sultanates and conquests of mainland Mindanao and Sulu. Sultanates began to form in Mindanao and Sulu. Names like Sultan Kudarat, Raha Lakandula, Raha Suliman, Raha Matanda became part of Philippine history and its quests for independence. Mindanao and Sulu are the original homeland of the Philippine Muslims. The peaceful triumph of Islam in Sulu in the middle of the 13th century led to the Islamization of local politics. As early as 1380, an Arabian trader by the name of Karim al-Makdum reportedly reached the Sulu archipelago. He established the first Muslim mosque in the Philippines in Seminole Island, Tawi-Tawi. Sulu was the first Muslim community in the south to establish a centralized government, the Sultanate of Sulu in 1450. Hashim Abu Bakar was the founder and the first Sultan of the Sulu Sultanate. The Sulu Sultanate is multi-ethnic. In the early 18th century, its territory encompassed the whole Zamboanga Peninsula, Basilan, Sulu, Tawi-Tawi, Palawan, and Sabah. The first Taosog preacher reached Lanao Lake before the arrival of foreign Muslim missionaries. It is for this account that Sulu became known in history as the center of Islam learning in this country. Meanwhile, the full Islamization of the west coast of Mindanao was accelerated with the arrival of Muhammad Sharif Kabungsuan. Kabungsuan and his followers arrived Malabang in 1515. He was accompanied by a Sama scholar where they passed by Tawi-Tawi. It was not long after the arrival that Sharif Kabungsuan established the Sultanate of Maguindanao, possibly in 1516. The rise of the Sultanate should be viewed as the culmination of Islamization in Mindanao. The first seat of the political power of Maguindanao was Langan and Maguindanao. When the Sultanate passed into the Maguindanao family and dynasty, the seat of power was moved to Pulangi Valley. In the upper Pulangi Valley, the ruling datus were the Buayan family. The political institution of the Buayan became Islamized as a result of the marriage of the Buayan prince to the daughter of Sultan Sharif Muhammad Kabusuan. After the death of Kabungsuan, the Boyan family founded the Sultanate of Boyan as an independent entity from the Maguindanao Sultanate. The existence of the two sultanates in mainland Mindanao strengthened Islam. The Boyan leaders managed to gain supremacy in the Pulangi Valley after the death of Rahab Wisan and succeeded by his son, Sultan Kudarat. It took more than 10 years for Sultan Kudarat to build his political power over the whole of Mindanao. He is remembered for his political prowess in uniting the two sultanates and the rest of the people in Mindanao under his strong leadership. Dynastic quarrels often broke out among the Muslim leaders. Its steady decline continued up to the arrival of the American colonialists in 1900s. This decline created a vacuum of leadership and finally led to the rise of small principalities in Mindanao, while others proclaimed their own sultanates as in the case of the 18 royal houses in Lanao area. The rise of Lanao royal houses in the face of the decline of the Maguindanao Sultanate signaled the disintegration and breakup of Asabiya or tribal solidarity among the Muslims in mainland Mindanao. The Muslim Ethnic Groups An ethnic community may be defined as a tribal group which has its own language and hold in common a set of a tradition different from others with whom they are in contact. 
The Muslims in the South are also culturally linked to Muslim countries in Southeast Asia, such as Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei, and the Batani of Southern Thailand. They are composed of 11 ethnic groups. Each group has its own language, but only a few control a political unit like a province or municipality. Some groups speak one language with three variations like Maranao, Iranun, and Magindanaon. The Sama people have one language with many variations such as the dialect of the Jama Mapun and the Bangingi. The Maranao Maranao means people of the lake. Their homeland is called Lana which means lake. Their oldest settlement started around here and up to this day, highly populated communities still dot the lake. Their language is similar to Magindanaon and Iranun. One shall be confused as to which of them owns the mother tongue since the Maranao and Iranun can understand 60% of the Magindanaon language. The Magindanao Magindanaon is the name of the family or dynasty which came to rule almost the whole island of Mindanao, particularly the former Cotabato. It later refers to the Muslim people who live in the Pulangi Valley which sprawls the southwestern part of Mindanao. It is for this reason the Magindanaon are called people of the plain. They accepted Islam at the last quarter of 15th century. Total Islamization of the whole Pulangi area succeeded only with the arrival of Sharif Kabungsuan, a prince from Johori who came to Mindanao after the fall of Malacca and nearby areas to Dutch colonialists in 1511. The greatest contribution of the Baguindanao to civilization in Southeast Asia were the sultanates of Baguindanao and Buayan. These sultanates rose almost simultaneously after the arrival of Sharif Kabungsuan, who founded the first sultanate in Mindanao. During its heyday, the sultanate of Baguindanao did bring the whole mainland of Mindanao under its control. It became the instrument of the Muslims in Mindanao in thwarting Western colonialism. The Cotabato had been the seat of the Baguindanao Sultanate. This is the ancestral land of the Baguindanao including the hill ethnic groups such as the Tiruray, the Sadai, and Subanun. The Iranun these people have inhabited the area bordering between Lano del Sur and Magindanao province. They claim to be the origin of these two ethnic groups. The language of the Maranao and Magindanao is strongly rooted in the Iranun tongue. The Iranun may perhaps be a mother language, the rest are just a mere dialects. For several centuries, the Aranun formed part of the Magindanao Sultanate. Their culture received much influence from the Magindanao rather than the Maranao. There was a case in the past the seat of the Magindanao Sultanate was situated at Lamitan and Malabang that were the strongholds of the Iranian society. They fought the western invaders under the flag of the Magindanao Sultanate. The Iranun were excellent in maritime activity. They used to ply the route connecting the Seleuci, Moro Gulf to Celebesi and raise the Spanish-held territories along the way. This is evidenced by the Dato system of leadership where a single leadership is recognized. An Iranun Dato, like a Sultan, wielded central power over his people, an account of their small population. The Iranuns have been overpowered by their neighbor and prevented them from having their own Sultanate. Yet, ethnic consciousness has been strong as the Iranun continued to preserve their own ways of life and even to chart their own political destiny. The Taosog Before the coming of Islam, the Taosog had already established a central government. When Islam came, Taosog leaders accepted Islam. They did not resist. As soon as they became Muslims, they made themselves models by infusing Islamic values and politics to the government. 
The result was the spread of justice in the land. Seeing the beauty of Muslim leadership, the entire natives finally accepted Islam. The peaceful triumph of Islam in Sulu in the middle of the 13th century led to the Islamization of local politics. This was the process that brought about the establishment of the Sulu Sultanate in 1450. Many Taosog leaders were sent outside Sulu to further strengthen the Sulu Sultanate influence. This was the region of the growth of Taosog communities in Tawi-Tawi, Palawan, Basilan, Zamboanga and Sabah. The Yakan. The culture of the Yakans is similar to the Taosogs. Its inner foundation lies in the spirit of Martabat. For the other side, religious institutions like Masjid and Madrasa, artifacts, and the vast number of Yakan professionals, ulema, politicians, fighters, Reinforce further the strength of the Yakan culture. These two foundations are firmly planted in the heart of the Yakans. This is the real strength. The challenge of the Yakans today is to steer their young generation to assert their rights and develop confidence in their both material and non-material culture. The Sama the Sama people are highly dispersed and scattered in the Sulu archipelago. There are five subclusters that make up the Sama people, helping each other as recognized as norm of the Sama people. Included in the Sama group are the Bajau, known as the Sea Gypsies of Sulu archipelago and Celebesi. Thus, there is the Sama Balimbing, Sama Simunol or Sama Sibutu. They inhabited most major islands of Tawi-Tawi, while in the mainland, the Sama concentration is confined to Balimbing and Sapa-Sapa. The Sama Bangenge are also considered major group within the Sama ethnic group. Their dialect is just a variation of the Sama language, geographical distance being separated from other Sama groups by seas has caused the variation of their dialect from other mother tongue. Jama Mapun are another Sama subgroup. They call their dialect as Pulun Mapun, which is part of the Sama language. The term Mapun stands for Wests. They call themselves as Jama Mapun because they are situated the distant wests of Sulu. The Sangil. The Sangil came from Sangehe, an archipelago sprawling the Celebes Sea just south of the Mindanao Sea. Their migration to Sarangani Province and to the coastal areas of Davao del Sur and South Cotabato was ahead of the coming of Islam to Southeast Asia. They embraced Islam later as a result of their continuous contact with their motherland, which became Islamized, as well as with emerging Muslim communities in Maguindanao and Sulu in the 14th century. The Kaagan The Kaagan inhabited mostly Davao areas. They became Muslims as a result of contact with the Maguindanao Sultanate and later strengthened with the arrival of some Taoso groups who helped to organize the Kaagan society. The Kulibugan They are part of the Subanin ethnic group an indigenous people inhabiting the interior of the Zamboanga Peninsula. Their neighbors, particularly the Sama Bangenge and the Taosogs, call this Islamized Subanin as Kulibugan because their culture has been altered by their Muslim neighbors and for years, there has been intermarriage with other groups that produce new generations. Hence, they are called Kulibugan. These people still speak the Subanan language and retain the Subanan type of social organization, which is limited to clan orientation with less political inclination. Today, the term Kulibugan is applied to all Subanon who moved to coastal areas and intermarried with the Muslims and finally embraced Islam.
The Palawan The early Muslim inhabitants in mainland Palawan were the Panimusan. These people became Muslims as a result of close contact with the Sulu Sultanate. Many Tausog during the Sultanate period came to Palawan in order to introduce Islam to the local people. The Muslim concentration is mostly in the southern part of Palawan, such as Patarasa, Rizal, Quezon, Brookes Point, and Española. In these municipalities, the Muslims are likely dominant and hold political power. The Mulbog The Mulbog are mainly confined in the Balabac Islands located at the southern tip of Palawan. They receive Islamic influence and later embrace Islam from Brunei Muslim missionaries. The propagation of Islam was active during the 15th century when Muslim principalities rose from the eastern side of the Malay Peninsula and Borneo. At this period, the Brunei Sultanate was expanding its influence to the Philippines and Palawan is not far from Brunei. The Sulu Sultanate also helped to strengthen Islam among the Mulbog. The Communal and Individual Obligations of Islam Historical gap is a period between two or more events keeping the new generation detached from the old ones. By nature, jihad requires collective action or sufficient participation from the Muslims, preferably to be led by the government under a righteous imam. This is the meaning of jihad to be known as Fardu Kifaya. There must be a group of Muslims, if not the entire masses, who shall carry out the jihad fi sabi lila. Failure to carry jihad will make the whole community or state in a state of sin. But if there is a section of Muslim population that rises up for jihad, the entire Muslims become free from sin. Jihad becomes farduain or individual obligation when the enemy sets a camp for about 300 kilometers from the population center of the muslims this is the opinion of imam shafi clearly jihad is the main factor that kept the bangsamoro society in the face of western onslaught jihad as far do Ain sustains the continuity of the jihad up to the present Jihad refers to the obligation incumbent on all Muslims, individuals, and the community to follow and realize God's will to lead a virtuous life and to extend Islamic community through preaching, education, example, writing, and etc. Thank you.